Uh, Fally, I'm really into philosophy, no relationship experience, but what most men call nagging and quarrelsome behavior, I see as small issues that can be solved with communication. Am I delusional? Uh, Wait, eh. did you say that? Yeah, I couldn't read I it. I couldn't read that fast enough. Well, I just read it. Look, I didn't hear it. Sorry. I just read it. Um, what is that? I mean... I would I would be inclined to agree. Obviously, it's situational, but more often than not, even with friendships or you know romantic relationships, the vast majority of things that end up causing major problems are usually due to our inability to properly communicate them. Oh, well, there's also yeah, just a fundamental right. difference in definition between nagging and bringing mm -hmm. attention to something that needs more effort and the relationship collectively so if there's something that needs to be fixed that's a communication issue nagging is by definition different yeah so yeah. nagging is what you the general population of the entire world who's married gets communication is what my husband and i do Aww. also i think nagging is just was like that articulate oh my god that was so can articulate. i get a bottle pop <laughs> oh. <laughs> sometimes i think nagging Sorry. could be something dumb like he leaves his shoes somewhere you don't want and you get like I mad over it nag. it's just like if you're upset just move his shoes i don't know i would never know I, I think I'd never knock like <sighs> for for women who maybe either aren't self-aware who aren't self-aware or maybe they just they aren't the type to nag they they haven't obviously been in a relationship with a woman because they're heterosexual right They've never been in that kind of relationship because oh, men can nag, but it's fairly rare. And this IQ, I'd like to reel you into this. Um, I think all of us men who've had any, even a modicum of dating experience, we've encountered women who are so quarrelsome. And it's like night and day when you have like a woman who brings you peace and who's calm and mellow. And then there's a, like, there are women, some women will hide that shit and it'll come out three months in, six months in. Mm -hmm. But some women, thank God, at least they, it's up front. Right. Immediately they lay it on. Mm -hmm. Immediately there, there's something that they're kind of picking on right away. And they're, they're kind of already like argumentative and disagreeable. And it can be on the first date, it can be on the second date. And, uh, Feel women don't really encounter that typically. I, I so feel like I feel like when. there's. I think if you think back to every relationship you've ever been in, any of them. You lied. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I love you. Um, okay. Sorry, this is nothing. Um, I love you. So I think that the the moment if you think back to every single important relationship you've ever had, think back to like the one moment that you were like, something was off. Like in the first date, in the first five minutes. Mm. Oh, yeah. When you're breaking up, it's you knew exactly thing. what was going to be, what I exactly what was going to break oh, you up so in like the first five not. minutes and you, and you chose to paint that red mm -hmm. flag white. And like that was, it's like, we want that person to be better what? than they are. You want, you believe in the potential of them, but you know exactly like within the first five minutes and you're like, man, it took a year. It's funny oh, that you me. say that because I, I just read something that was to the same effect and I couldn't agree more like more often than not you and do men end have it up, too you know you do end up having that thing and it ends up it's like that's oh. why I didn't bring up my and if we could if we could like pay attention to that wedding. intuition yeah, like, men too do you do it too well and ultimately too I think a lot of women uh, sometimes will go for men because they want to change them and it's like uh -huh. you're not going to change him I did well, like, what, would be, better, I did, what daddy. would be better I wouldn't, hear, I wouldn't call it intuition real, I would just call I mean, it heuristics not only is she a total babe from from previous <laughs> dating experiences and yeah. just hey hey thank hey you. yo shut up let them talk thank you um yeah like i said i wouldn't call it intuition i would just call it heuristics from previous dating experiences gamerhawk69 <laughs> donated 100 dollars attesting to brian's point he was pointing out how y'all don't deal with women and how they nag because y'all like men but it is exhausting it's emotionally exhausting dealing with a woman who's highly neurotic highly disagreeable Everything bothers her. Nothing is ever good enough. She has a problem with every minuscule thing that pops up. And then she just exaggerates problems and issues to the point to where the only thing you want to do is get away from her. And that is a very real thing that a lot of men experience. I've dealt with it. And as I said, it's not intuitive when you deal with a woman after you've dealt with a woman like that and you move on to another woman. It's just heuristics. You already know. I've seen this before. I've seen this story right. before. This woman is going to be a headache. And that's essentially what we try to get away from. These women are migraines and they create a lot of issues over the simplest things. You can't even communicate effectively with them because they're not willing to listen. They're not willing to understand 
understand and they don't see the flaws and the things that they do wrong especially when it comes to how they project um those those Somewhere issues along the line, yeah that woman was given what she was what she wanted by acting that way and like so it's like I think the more men that are like they put up with it, they yeah, they put leave. up with it, and they so like the men who like them. are like, nah, I'm not having it. Yeah, like yeah. they need more of that in order to stop the nagging. Here's but, the, the the one problem though. Even if you do check them, I think there's probably like a mental illness component to it, like they have BPD or you know bipolar. Uh, I mean, I, I've I've not to get into any specifics, but I've definitely encountered women who. Like, they, they, before you even meet them, you can just, you can just tell they're like already getting on your case about shit. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't know, they're, they're, they're picking fights and quarreling. You have not even met this person and they already feel entitled to a certain, first off, a girl should never like disrespect you and like to begin with, but they'll already start like pushing your buttons really early on. And people and they'll, they'll like push feel, for the boundaries, see how far they can get. And it's like, what are you doing that for? Mm -hmm. Like, And it's it's hard to perfectly articulate, like to give an example of how a woman might, might nag. But like, for example, here's an example. Let's say you haven't even met her in person. You've met online, but she starts, uh, here, here's actually a really good example. I think maybe a lot of guys have experienced this. You haven't even met her in person, but you don't respond to her immediately. Some, some people, you're very busy, I'm very busy. I don't respond to my texts right away. Uh, I, I'm not the type of guy who's always on my phone. I'll put my phone on silent. I'll put my, Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> fucking came out of nowhere. Don't do that. Just use God's name. Shut Jane. the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put my phone on silent and I'll put it face down so nothing can disrupt me, right? And I'll do that for 10 hours straight. Oh, and then I'll have a girl who I haven't, haven't even met in person and she's already like, oh, why didn't you, you know, respond to like da, 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 making a big fuss about the fact I haven't responded to her in fucking 10 hours. That's weird. I haven't even I met agree. you. No, I agree. You haven't even gotten who are there yet. You? Like, you know? chill out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's not a perfect example. There's tons of other examples, but. Um, well, then those people are making it easier for you to say no to. Yeah. I also think that we live, and I'd be curious about your perspective on this. There's a book called The Crazy Cycle. I was touching on it earlier. And the perspective of this psychologist who writes it says that there is a fundamental, two fundamental things in every relationship that's needed to thrive and be healthy, and those things are love and respect. And he is a Christian psychologist, and so he does base this on how God designed men and how God designed women. The preface of it being that men are fundamentally needed to, designed to need respect and then love, whereas women are created to need love and then respect. Mm -hmm. and and this has been instrumental in my marriage too, where I just have to be on the right seat on the bus. I have to trust my husband's discernment and respect his authority over me in a biblical way, not in a belittling or demeaning way, but that his intentions for me and our family are pure and mm -hmm. rooted in love. And I think that's something that, that lots of women lack in this culture oh, is the ability to have respect and get on that right seat, I, it all comes back to the feminist thing where equality be, started to become a thing and then it was like, well, now we're equal, but we weren't created that way. Well, I right. think that also there's there's a lot of women that like they're, they're seeing this new trad wife thing happen and they're like, well, I do like my career and I do like things and I do like want to work and I am able to make it work and have kids. Like why is it bad that I, I have ambitions as well? And it's, it's like, no, it's not bad. But the thing is, is like, even if you're a boss bitch, like you submit to your man mm -hmm. like when you Amen. get home like he's in charge like and, and, and if you don't have to worry mm, about like mm. that like that's how it should be you go out and if you don't have to worry about your relationship a woman in love like sings like she's really at her best and like you have a loyal like beautiful woman no matter what scale she's on she becomes more beautiful when you love her right right and when she can depend on the relationship she's in at home dude the whole world is her oyster but if like Absolutely. all these trite naggings and all this bullshit, like it just ends up like. Yeah, you pointed out a really profound difference um, stemming from the fundamental differences in the way men and women communicate and our value systems like respect for a man is what love is for a woman. And essentially, you, when you deal with a woman who doesn't trust your judgment, that in itself is a lack of respect for you as a man 
off rip because you have good intentions. You're doing things in good faith. But you and have to she, have proof that you're making the good decisions too for her to respect your decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, she like, shouldn't be with you if she doesn't trust you. I agree. You. Yeah, I agree. exactly. So it, from the moment she's with you, you assume she respects your right. ability to lead and you assume she wants you to lead until she's giving you that pushback on nearly everything that you say and then it's like well what do you think i'm trying to do do you think i'm trying to purposely harm us do you think i'm trying to purposely mm -hmm. put us in a negative situation that yeah. affects both of us to the point to where you can't trust me or you don't feel that i can lead and that's not what most men do and i, I think a lot of women come from a place of having some sort of vitriol towards men who try to lead them in a way they don't agree with because they don't agree with how he corrects them and and that in turn becomes the, the disrespect to a man that they need in order to truly appreciate and love his woman. Yeah, I make a lot of content about um, how women should submit to their husbands and about how women should respect their husbands. And I get so much pushback. There was like, oh, well, what if he does this or what if he does that? Then he shouldn't and be your like, husband. Yeah, and it's like, well, why are you <laughs> thinking of him so low that you mm -hmm. think he doesn't care about you and your family? Like, that's so disrespectful. But you know, women just don't respect men, so. I also think a lot of that has to do even with the the push in recent years, you know, with feminism, there's so much ego and pride associated with it, and that makes women so reluctant to, to get any sort of criticism or be open to hearing any sort of feedback. And it's, like you said, the boss bitch energy, like all of those movements, it is it is so incredibly toxic on society. If you're your own god and you don't have somebody to answer to, then 100%. you're screwed, it's lonely up there. Yeah, it's, 100%. it's lonely at the top. Um, and it's one of those things that's really sad to see with a lot of young women is you, <laughs> There, there seems to be that narrative in the music we listen to, the TV shows we watch, everything, where it's like, oh, women, you don't need no man. It's like, yeah, we do, actually. We absolutely need a man. Are you kidding me? I, the, nothing that we have in this world would be here if it were not for these strong men that built our civilization. Mm -hmm. Period. 